Hello, this is Klaus Jensen presenting my second video in the How Does a Class B Player Think uh, series. And in this game I play a middle-aged man named Jeff who has not been playing chess for 35 years but inside the last couple of years has taken up chess seriously again. So he took a course with international master David Proust from chess.com last summer and now he wants to do the exercise of speaking his thoughts about every move as he plays it. Jeff is rated just below 1800 on chess.com and describes his game this way. I feel I'm quite strong in tactics, though struggle with long-term strategies. My plan tend to be dominated by little sayings such as develop knights before bishops, never move a piece twice in the opening, knights on the rim are dim, and castle early, castle often. Jeff says that uh, David Proust made fun of him because of these rules were guiding Jeff's game too much. And I think it's okay to use these general rules as a guideline, but evaluation of the position is much more important than any general rule. Well, enough about Jeff and rules, let's get on with the game. Jeff is white and I'm playing the black pieces. And the game starts e4 and Jeff says he's an one e4 player because this leads to more open positions which fits his tactical style. e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, and here I told Jeff that I would play the quiet bishop c5 rather, rather than the sharp two knights defense. But Jeff means business in this game and he plays the ultra sharp and not completely sound evens gambit b4. And it, a little bit about the opening choice from Jeff. I think it's a good choice because it should fit his tactical style and it shows that Jeff is going to have a go at me and that's a good attitude. He said he would uh, kick himself afterwards if he hadn't given himself the chance of playing a gambit against a strong player. Now the chance was there. But I also th uh, think uh, it's a, a bad choice because it's likely to give black an advantage if he knows what he's doing. Um, and even gambits, uh, gambit and other gambits are much more effective over the board than in correspondence. Bishop takes b4 and now my question to Jeff was what is the strategical idea behind the Evans Gambit and Jeff correctly answered the idea is to give up the b-pawn in exchange for a strong center and pressure on the weak point in black's position the f7 square since the queen often goes to b3 and knights sometimes go to e5 c3 from Jeff, bishop e7, d4 and knight a5 and there are several ways for black to play against the Evans Gambit this line aims at a quick removal of the dangerous bishop on c4 and thereby indirectly defending uh, f7. Jeff said that he considered bishop e2 but felt it was too passive. Um, I think it's the best move. Not only does it keep the bishop pair, it also uh, makes the black knight on a5 look really silly. A knight that uh, by the way has broken two of the general rules we spoke of just before the game. It has moved twice and it's on the rim. Um, Another move uh, considered by Jeff was uh, bishop takes f7, king takes f7, knight takes e5 check, but he felt that this was uh, premature and I can only agree with him. So instead uh, he played knight e5. And then knight takes c4, knight takes c4, and white has a very nice center, but d5. e takes d5, queen takes knight e3, queen a5, castles, knight f6, and rook e1. And all these last three or four moves uh, Jeff had planned already when he played e takes d5. So that was uh, very nice but um, only now um, um, after my castling that he uh, only now Jeff says that he uh, is a bit concerned about the development of his queenside pieces. And I asked him to formulate a plan that, plan that uh, deals with the, this problem. He didn't answer on this move, but played knight c4 instead and commented, this is the kind of move I love to play against lesser opponents, hoping they don't see the discovered attack on the bishop on e7. And only now Jeff starts reflecting on how to develop his queenside pieces. He says that after the bishop on uh, e7 has gone, in the next move he plans bishop a3 and knight d2 and then king side attack. I think the last uh, few moves have, have, have shown uh, Jeff's weakness in long term planning. And let's go back a few moves to let me explain uh, what I mean. Um, 
after knight f6, if Jeff had been aware of his future problems with the development of his pieces already at this point, he might have uh, realized that playing c4 here in this position will make it a lot easier for him to develop. For, for example, castles and then bishop b2, c6, and now the c3 three square is available for the knight. And I think this is a much better setup for white than the one chosen in the game. So instead of just uh, playing some moves without thinking uh, further ahead, um, Jeff might have uh, considered c4 here as a better move than uh, rook e1 as he played in the game, which isolated uh, rook e1 looks right, but uh, it has some problems with development later, and especially this knight c4 move does nothing for development. Queen a6, rook takes e7. I'm scared of having uh, of the thought of having a rook deep in enemy territory, Jeff comments, and continues that he's sure, he's sure there's a sneaky way in which I will trap it. I didn't comment on it uh, during the game, but I thought, why on earth Jeff played these non-developing moves when he knew he had a development problem and even didn't feel comfortable with having a rook on e7? It makes very little sense to me. Queen takes c4, bishop a3, Jeff returns to his development plan and notes that b bishop a3 also prevents knight d5 because of the line uh, knight d5, rook e5, knight takes c3, knight takes c3, queen takes c3, bishop takes f8, wins the exchange, and this is of course true. However, there is an improvement for black. Um, instead of knight takes c3, rook d8. Uh, so Jeff's calculation was not accurate. Bishop a3 and then bishop g4 from me, queen b3. And Jeff argues that a queen exchange would favor him because of connected, pass, connected pawns and better control in the center. I agree, so I played queen d3 instead to prevent knight d2. And Jeff considered many moves here. Um, he saw that rook e3 would be met by rook f to e8 and now the queen cannot be taken because uh, of the back rank, rank made on uh, e1. And um, he decided to play h3. And uh, the reason uh, is that he gives uh, luft to the king with tempo since my bishop is attacked. So I think h3 was a very nice move. I didn't want to give a pawn with the by playing bishop e6 here because then b rook takes f takes, bishop takes f8, rook takes f8, and queen takes e6 check. So instead I played uh, bishop d1. And then came rook e3, which is a good move from Jeff. He comments that this forces an exchange of some pieces, and right here is bishop takes b3, rook takes d3, bishop c4. And now Jeff plays bishop takes f8, and comments that this move is uh, forced, but it's not. Also possible was uh, rook e3, rook f2, e8, knight d2. And comparing this position to the one in the game after uh, Jeff's bishop b4, there's no doubt that uh, this is the better setup for white. But after bishop takes uh, f8 and uh, bishop takes d3, bishop b4, we have this position here, and I played b6, preparing a a5, knight d2. I'm worried about a5 and knight d5, Jeff comments. And knight d5 was the move that came. It's very logical that uh, Jeff now wants to defend his uh, three c, c3 pawn, because after r a5, bishop a3, it would be hanging. So rook c1. But now Jeff faces another problem. I can enter his position with rook e2. And here Jeff considered bishop a3 to prepare c4, but he thought he, he, it would be met by b5. So therefore he played a4 first. But I don't think I would have played b5, because it gives up uh, the control of c5, which would be a very nice square for, for the white knight. But he reasoned that uh, I would play b5, so uh, he played a4 to prepare bishop a3 and c4. Rook e2, knight f3, f6, taking away some important squares for the white white knight and giving some luft to my king. a5, played to avoid attacks from the rook. Rook a2 could have uh, followed. So rook b2 instead, 
G3, somehow a waiting move, but also preventing knight f4, Jeff comments. He also said that he expected bishop e4 from me now. But I told him that I was uh, thinking more in lines of simplifying into a one end game, so I tried knight takes b4, c takes b4, rook takes b4, rook takes c7, b takes a5, and Jeff said he had seen this line and believed he would have chances to hold the game, and I think he's right. All my hopes lie in the a-pawn. Rook takes a7, this is actually a mistake, uh, but we both missed uh, the tactic that uh, could follow here, rook b1 check, and uh, king h2, and then uh, bishop e4, knight g1, rook b2, and the f2 pawn is falling, and if White instead had tried king g2, then bishop e4, rook takes a5, and rook b3, and then the uh, knight is lost on f3. So, but uh, we both mi missed uh, this uh, tactic. I played rook a4, knight d2, rook a1 check, and now came king g2, which is in fact uh, a mistake. Better was uh, king h2, then rook a2, knight b3, bishop c4, knight takes a5, bishop d5, threatening mate, g4, to give an escape route for the king, rook takes f2, and king g3, and this is definitely uh, um, hold holdable for white, I think. So king g2 came, and that was a bit sad that uh, Jeff made a mistake here, because now came rook a2, knight b3, and bishop e4, check, ouch, because now, uh, after king f1, Jeff thought a perpetual was uh, coming up, uh, bishop d3 check, ba back and forth here, but uh, I had the decisive bishop f3. And now white loses the knight because it cannot leave the protection of rook a1 checkmate. So king e1 followed instead, and rook e2, and here Jeff resigned the game. Um, and he commented uh, that he had enjoyed the game and that one of the lessons to learn from this game was that he had many one or two move plans but that they were not necessarily connected and I think that is true but it's of course difficult to judge uh, Jeff's game from only playing one game against him in any case I'd like to thank Jeff for playing this game with me and not only share a lot of interesting thoughts on the game as it progressed but also playing a very good game that was only decided due to a, a tactic in the end game I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope to see you on my blog at klausjensen.com. Bye bye for now.